Suppose you drop a ball down a hill. Classically, when the ball rolls up the hill on the other side, it can't go any higher than the height at which you dropped it, even if there is a nice big slope on the other side. Unless you give the ball enough energy to get over the barrier. But this is quantum mechanics, and in quantum mechanics, things work a little differently. The quantum world is probabilistic. Chances are, when you release the particle into a valley, next time you see it, it will still be somewhere in that valley. However, the particle would really like to be on the other side where the slope is. And there's a small chance that that's exactly where you'll find it. You could even find it in the middle of the mountain. Now suppose you're at the newest boy band's book signing, and there are neat rows of fangirls. The singer of the boy band walks in between the lines, acting as a wingman, and the fangirls follow him, stepping out of their line. Now another member of the band, let's say he's the drummer, walks towards these, dis these displaced, attractive girls to chat them up. So this passing boy member, an electron, attracts the lattice, neat lines of fangirls, causing a slight ripple towards his path. Now the other boy band member, Electron, passing in the opposite direction, is attracted to that displacement. But Catherine, you might ask, how do mountains and fangirls come together and help me understand the Josephson effect? Well, thanks to the mountain, you now understand quantum tunneling, and the fangirls let you understand Cooper pairing. Now we've got a young college bro. He's at Caltech. Let's pretend that Caltech and Stanford are both equivalent. Stanford wants him to move from Caltech. Come here. Why? You're the same. Oh, please. But I have nothing to gain by moving. My environment would be the same at Stanford as at Caltech, and I'm already at Caltech. We will pay you to come here. Three hundred dollars. Higher. One thousand dollars? All right, deal. I'm there. Now let's backtrack. The young college bro is back at Caltech, and Stanford wants him. But this time, his best friend says, Hey, I'm moving to Stanford. I'll miss you. I'll come with you. I don't want to lose you. And no bribing was required on Stanford's part. The boy was just too attached to his best friend. So the Josephson Junction is pretty much two superconductors sandwiched with a thin insulating barrier in between them. So the left plate is Caltech, and the right plate is Stanford. The loner college bro, or singlet electron, needs bribing, initial voltage, before he can form a current across the barrier. Josephson predicted that the college bro and his best friend, Cooper paired electrons, would need no bribing, initial voltage, to cross the barrier. And he was right. <laughs>